So if you just watched the first derivative test video, uh, you might be wondering if there's an easier way to identify local extrema. And the answer is kind of. Um, so we have the second derivative test, and we can use the second derivative test for a couple things, but the first thing we can do is to maybe speed up a little bit of the process um, to find local extrema. You can't get to the second derivative without taking the first, so we're going to start by finding our critical points again. Um, and if you remember from the last video, that's where the derivative is equal to zero. So we're going to get all of these values that satisfy that equation. Um, and then because this is the second derivative test, we're going to find the second derivative, and we're going to evaluate it for all of the critical points that I got. And depending on the outcome, um, that's going to tell me if I have a local max or min. So for all of these examples, sorry, all of these results, um, the derivative, the first derivative is zero. That's because it has to be a critical point. So if I have zero for my first derivative, and my second derivative at whatever that critical point is, is positive, it's a bit counterintuitive. I actually have a local minimum. min at that value, at that critical point. Uh, it's the reverse for the next case. So again, if the first derivative is zero, that means it's a critical point. Um, and the second derivative is negative. Again, it's counterintuitive here. I have a local maximum at that critical point. The reason for that is we learned that we have a local maximum when f goes from positive to negative. So when the slope goes from positive to negative, so I've got maybe something like this here. My slope goes from a positive, if I were to graph like the value of my slope, right? I'm going from positive to negative. Well, that produces a negative slope, which is why I get a negative second derivative in order to get a maximum value. Likewise, for a, mac a minimum, my derivative, my slope, is going from negative to positive. So if I were to track the value of the slope, right, going from negative to positive, that is itself a positive slope, which means my second derivative is positive, but I have a local minimum. So be careful. It's a little bit counterintuitive here. Want to be really careful. If both your first and second derivatives are equal, then the second derivative test is inconclusive, and I should just use the first derivative test instead. Use the first derivative test instead. We'll come back to this with our um, example from the first derivative test video in a minute. But for now, I want to talk about the other thing that we use the second derivative test for, and that is for what we call concavity. And we've talked about concavity before, right? We talked about parabolas. This would be a parabola whose concavity is upwards. So we say concave up, or cu. And we have parabolas whose concave, whose concavity is downwards. We have concave down. C, D. And since a lot of polynomial functions kind of just look like a series of parabolas, essentially, um, we can still apply the same word. So it's the same exact process as the first derivative test. I'm going to solve this equation with the second derivative equal to zero. So find the second derivative, set it equal to zero. We're going to make a sign chart and we're going to test values again. I'm going to go through the results this time before we actually go through the example. When we make our sign chart and we test our values, if we test a value and we get a positive second derivative, then f is concave up on whatever that open interval is. Open interval. So again, it's still an open interval, not a closed interval. If f double prime is negative, we say, so again, this is positive and this is negative, we say that it's concave down. Again, on the same open interval, uh, or just on some open interval, rather. Interval 
a, b. And if f double prime is equal to zero, which is what I'm solving by getting this, right? We say f is possibly an inflection point. An inflection point. All this means is that we're moving from concave down to concave up or vice versa. We're changing concavity at that point. This is just a change in concavity. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, realistically, this is these are the things we're solving for to make our sign chart. Um, you're finding your inflection points and then kind of trying to find the concavity around that. So you don't see it too, too often. Um, you do run into it once in a while. So we'll explain what that means a little bit later on. But for now, let's go back to our example from the last video. And in the last video, I gave you a function. I gave you, we found its derivative and we found the critical points. Great. So let's assume that I told you that you needed to use the second derivative test. I'm going to pick a different color. Use the second derivative test to determine if these critical points are maxima or minima. Well, in order to do that, I need to know what the second derivative is. So let's we'll take the second derivative. I'm going to get 6x plus 4. Fantastic. I'm going to test those two critical points. So if I test negative 2.12, I'm going to get 6 times negative 2.12 plus 4. Fortunately, I did this ahead of time. So we get negative 8.72. And that is, of course, a negative number. And we said that if I get a negative number, I have a local maximum. And that checks out with what we did in the first video, in the first derivative test video. If I do this with 0.786, I get positive uh, 8.72, which of course is a positive number. And so that is a minimum, which again, checks out with what we said in the first derivative test video. So this is another way that we can find or classify um, local extrema using the second derivative test. Well, that's great, but we wanna know more. We wanna know about the concavity. So in order to do that, we need to find the points find our inflection points. Where is the second derivative equal to zero? So where is 6x plus 4 equal to zero? That happens when x is negative 2 thirds. So I'm going to make my sign chart at negative 2 thirds. I'm going to test a couple points around negative 2 thirds. And I'm going to determine the sign of f double prime. So we'll pick I'll pick easy ones. I can do negative one and I can do zero. Uh, I'm going to get, let's see, I get negative two when I plug in negative one and I get positive four when I plug in zero. Again, we can kind of pull these intervals from our sign chart to tell us about the concavity. I'm looking for positive concave up, negative concave down, positive up, negative down, Hopefully, again, a little intuitive there with your connections. So we can say that f is concave up on the interval negative 2 thirds to infinity. And we can say that f is concave down on negative infinity to negative 2 thirds. That's the second derivative test. It's the same, essentially, the same process as the first derivative test. Um, we're just using different terminology. Right, so that's that's all there is to it. The key is to stay organized, especially when we start to use this. You'll see with the next part of 4.4 when we do some curve sketching, you really need to stay organized. Keep everything super easy to find. Keep everything together. Um, I mean, if you have the luxury of being able to color code, do it, but you really, really, really need to get your work organized 
be meticulous, um, really try to work as cleanly and neatly as possible. It's going to help you keep track of everything that you need to keep track of.